Hi, my name's Wayne Combin and I'm a small boat angler and occasionally I catch a fish that I like to bring back for the table and what we're going to do in this series is show you how to prepare and cook some of the fish different species, different recipes that you can do in your own kitchen at home, as you can see this is a professional kitchen so uh, keep watching, hopefully you pick up some nice tips for some very tasty meals Today we're going to cook rainbow trout um, First of all though, we need to fillet it. I'm not going to be too fussy today with this filleting because for the recipe it's going to involve uh, skinless and boneless uh, chunklets, if you want to call them, something like that. So uh, first and foremost though, we're going to fillet it. Okay, <clears throat> I like to use a fairly sturdy knife. A lot of filleting knives are really flimsy, but this one's a little stronger. It's not the, a top quality filleting knife, and in fact, um, because it's not top quality, I don't mind you using this type of sharpener to sharpen it. So uh, with this one you just fix it and draw the blade through. And what it does, every time you draw it through, it takes off, you can hear it, a tiny piece from either side and actually leaves it extraordinarily sharp. Now you wouldn't use this with a good quality knife because you'd ruin it, you'd want a good stone for that. But for knives like this, this sort of sharpener is perfect. Keeps it very, very sharp. And a sharp knife actually for filleting is far, far better and safer for you than a blunt one. Okay, this fish has already been cleaned and it's had its tail cut off. I'm going to go in just behind the gill plate there. Just down. And how I like to do all round fish, I like to come in just the top side of the backbone, so I'm just going to come in there, just a gentle cut all the way along. Now when I get to about a third of the way along, I'm going to go right the way in, staying on top of the middle line of bones, and I'll just clean that straight across like so. And what that does then, it allows me to come in and follow the bones. You can hear the knife against those bones. What we've done now is we've taken the side off of that trout, we've taken the bones out, we've taken the skin off, I've cut it into even pieces. Because what we're going to do for this recipe is we're going to deep fry these in a curry batter. It's a nice oily fish and it will take a bit of flavour. So we're going to make the batter next. You don't necessarily have to use trout for this recipe. It uh, just happens to be trout we have. Bass is another very good one. In fact, any fish has got a little bit of oil to it, um, bream would be a good one to use. Works particularly well for what we're going to do today. Right, we're going to knock up a simple curry batter, very, very simple in fact. Um, first thing you do is get a bit of plain flour. You want to use plain, not self raising And if you just put it through a sieve, it just aerates it, makes your batter a bit more fluffy. Now I'm not going to be specific with weights here, I don't have to be. I've only got a half a trout to, to do at the moment, so I'm just going to put a little bit in. but. Go, gets the lumps out of your flour. To this, I'm going to put in a tablespoon of uh, oil. This is just sunflower oil. You can use uh, whatever you like for that actually rapeseed oil, sesame, whatever really takes your fancy. I'm going to put a tiny bit of garam masala in, not a lot. A little bit of extra ginger, again not a lot, and a nice heat, doesn't matter if a bit falls in, because I want a little bit extra, a nice heat tablespoon of curry powder. Now you can use mild, you can use hot, whatever your taste is, you can also use different types of curry powder, in fact you can knock up your own 
curry recipe from fresh herbs if you really want to. That does work out rather expensive. I find the dried herbs are just as good really for this type of recipe. We've mixed those dry ingredients up, all by the oil, I know. Now we've got ourselves some uh, ale, beer, whatever you want. Don't use cheap lager, that's not really great. But what this does is where it's uh, got a tiny bit of fizz to it, not a lot, but what it does, it gives that batter an extra bit of crispiness and also imparts a very, very nice flavour. Add it a little at a time, just gently mix that in for now. You don't want to make it too wet. If you make it too wet, it won't stick to the fish very well. It'll be very thin. If you make it too thick, the batter will go very, very soggy. So you want a nice consistency. I always think like a nice, nice thick emulsion paint is a good consistency. So add a little at a time. Whisking as you go. No more cons in this kitchen, I'm afraid. Don't even have an electric mixer. Just get those lumps out. And that doesn't look a bad consistency to me. As I say, you want it sort of like emulsion. There's still a few lumps in there, but I shall get those out in a second. But as I say, that is the consistency for sure that you're looking for. And what we do is, once I've mixed and got those lumps out, we'll let that batter stand for about 30 minutes while we do a couple of other preps for our side dishes. Okay, now we're going to prepare some coconut rice. Again, very, very simple. I do like simple. A bit of butter, which we're going to melt. So that's on the hob. And what we're going to do, we're going to put in a sachet of rice in a moment. As soon as that butter, in fact, I'll put it in now. That can go in, and what we want is that rice to uh, be coated by the melted butter. We don't want to give, we're not trying to cook it at the moment, we're just trying to let it go slightly translucent and uh, let the butter coat it. So that'll take a couple of seconds just to uh, melt, I'll stir it a touch as well. What we're going to then do is add our boiling water, I've already boiled the kettle, and some coconut milk. And uh, we'll just let it boil away. With rice, what you want to do, Get it to the boil, turn it down, get a nice tight fitting lid on, and leave it. Now, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how you like your rice. Personally, I don't like my rice hard, I prefer it quite fluffy, so usually between that time, uh, 18 minutes does it for me. So, uh, when we're finished with that, we'll uh, go on to our last part of this dish, which is a yoghurt dip. Okay, well I'm keeping this rice moving, it's on a very low heat, we're just really trying to melt the butter, coat the rice. You can season it a touch if you like. A bit of salt. A wee bit of pepper. Not a lot actually, but I just want to season it ever so slightly. And what we're going to do now is add the water and the coconut milk. Okay, now the amounts, personally, you've got to be a bit careful of how much liquid you put in. You don't want too much in because uh, it'll just be too watery and too wet. Too little and you won't have enough moisture to cook the rice. So work out the amount of rice you're putting in to the amount of liquid. Now, I like to personally have 50% water and 50% coconut milk for this recipe. Okay, the reason I'm stirring this can is because I forgot to shake it before I opened it and uh, you really want to do that because coconut milk separates and uh, you don't want the big lump of harsh coconut and all the uh, coconut milk underneath it so and that should be enough for this particular recipe. Now as I mentioned what I'm going to do is just give it a quick stir and that's the last stir I'm going to do now until it's cooked. So just stir the uh, water and the coconut milk through. As soon as that comes back to the boil, I should put a good fitting lid on it. And uh, I've used the wrong pan. Those of you will spot that that's a pouring pan, but it doesn't matter. I've got a lid that fits on there nice and snug. And uh, as soon as that comes to the boil, lid goes on, goes down to simmer, 
about 18 minutes. I don't stir it, by the way, you just leave it and it will almost steam through. Nice fluffy rice, rice hopefully. Okay, we're gonna make like a mint yogurt dip to go with these uh, curried uh, trout pieces. Again, simply, some natural Greek yogurt. To that, I'm gonna add some mint sauce. Now again, don't put too much of this in and make it too overpowering. I find a nice heap teaspoons for this amount is plenty. Okay, all I'm going to do is just uh, mix that together. In the meantime, what I've done is, got my oil on the pan behind me, just sunflower oil, got it heating up. You need that at the right temperature before you put your fish pieces in. If it's not hot enough, again, they'll go in, they'll be soggy. If it's too hot, you can potentially burn the outside of the batter and not cook the fish through. So the temperature, if you want to check it's about right, you can either do a couple of things, you can drop a piece of the batter in it, should start bubbling straight away. Um, or you can drop a square of bread in and after about I don't know, a minute, maybe a minute and a half, if that should be nice and golden brown. And that tells you pretty much that your oil's at the right temperature. Again, watch yourself with hot oil. Shouldn't need to tell people, but you never know. Make sure there's no children around. Make sure the handle's not pointing outside. All these things you should already know, but I don't mind telling you again, just in case. Just mixing that up together. Just dusting these uh, trout pieces in a little bit of flour helps the batter to stick a little bit more. Don't have to be mad with it, just uh, basically getting any of the excess moisture off of it just helps that batter to coat it a little, little bit better. And the rice is on its way nicely. The oil is virtually there. When it is, I'll try to get all these pieces in. Um, as quickly as possible. You don't want to put them in too slowly because by the time one piece is cooked, the next piece won't necessarily be the last piece and the first piece, as it were. So uh, I'm just going to prep these and we'll drop them in the batter in a moment and we'll have them in that oil in next to no time. See how they go. Just dropping some of the bigger pieces of trout in because uh, although I cut them relatively evenly, some are from the thicker part of the fillet. They're the ones I'm dropping in first because obviously they take slightly longer to cook so I'm going to coat them with the uh, batter. So it's just a case of batter on, shake the excess off and drop it straight into that oil. Okay, now I'm just going to try to turn these pieces over if I can. Separate any quickly that are stuck together. You're going to always get a few bits stuck together, don't worry too much. You'll separate them easily once they're out of the oil. Now really, you're looking at those, because that's a dark batter, it looks quite golden quite quickly. But as a rule of thumb, these are probably cut in uh, I don't know, two centimetre cubes I suppose. So. I'm looking at giving these no more really in that oil than about three minutes. Well, the idea of basically putting a batter on something when you fry it, uh, deep fry it, is uh, it almost gives a fish a bit of protection. If you were to just put the fish in as it was and deep fry it, pretty much it, it wouldn't come out uh, half as nice as it does if you've got a coating on it. So um, just a little something there that a few people may not know. Now I'm just taking these straight out, putting them on a bit of kitchen roll to drain that excess oil off of them. Now bear in mind that any fish, usually straight out of heat, will continue to cook for a short while afterwards, so don't overdo it. As soon as that trout came out, we timed it so the rice was ready. 
I just put it in a cup, a bit of chefy, turned it over. Okay, not a nice round cup, but it still looks a bit neater than slopping a load of rice straight on the plate. On goes the lovely crispy, you can hear those, see how crispy they are. Lovely crispy bits of trout in that very, very nice curried batter. And here's our dip, which I'm going to put on the side. Nice, plenty of dip for people there. In fact, oh, I'll get more. And all I'm going to do to finish that off a little bit chefy again is a tiny bit of paprika over that, which makes it look a little bit prettier. Not really for flavour, but there you go. Now, what's missing here? I'll tell you what's missing here. No slice of lemon on the side, unfortunately. I can only use what I've got in the kitchen. I didn't have any lemon. Uh, had some lemon juice, but I uh, can't pull that on the side of the plate, clearly. But a nice slice of lemon. I'll tell you what else would be nice here. Nice like pitta pocket or something like that. Nan pocket. You could possibly put them in there with a nice bit of that. Bit of salad, maybe. Beef it up a little bit prettier. But there you go. That is an, actually a very easy and a very nice way of cooking trout, which I find a little muddy normally. But I'll tell you what, cook like this, If I say so myself, really rather good.